Welcome to Calvary Lutheran Church's organ bench. I'm Pastor James Travis. You'll notice I'm not on the organ tonight, but my family has joined me at home singing Holy, Holy, Holy for Trinity Sunday. We're approaching Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Holy God, and you'll notice three times we sing holy as indicated in the Bible. He is amazingly omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. In other words, he's present everywhere. He knows all things and is all-powerful. How do you approach such a God as this? Our hymn tonight, written by Pastor Reginald Heber. Yeah, that's who he is. He's from England, and he was an amazing young man. He, at the age of seven year old, grew up in a wealthy family and they gave him a good education and he put it right to use. At seven years old, he was translating Latin into English for rhyme. And of course, then he goes on to Oxford and he'll eventually become the, the rector or, and a vicar at his father's church in Shrewsbury. Now, while he's there, he's going to end up writing 57 hymns based on the church here. That's pretty impressive. Another, he's the first one really to do this, so each Sunday of the year, a different hymn was written for it. But what's amazing is, because of his passion and conviction and not wanting to offend anyone in the church, he ends up, none of them are ever sung, because that wasn't permitted in the church at that time. It's only after he dies that they end up being published. Now, he didn't just write this hymn, as I said, 57 others. Some that you might recognize are on Greenland's icy mountains, or you might think of Brightest and Best, the Epiphany hymn. And he believed exactly what these hymns said, but will go on and become the Bishop of Calcutta, probably recognize that name in India. That's also where Mother Teresa did much of her work. And while he was there, he did mission work as the bishop and organized many things, but it was said that he worked way too hard. And one day he was preaching and of course teaching, and it was a hot day and ended up jumping into a cold pool of water and he ends up having a stroke and drowning. What an end to his life. But then, of course, these 57 hymns ended up being published and have, of course, holy, 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 now we have. It was later set to the tune called Nicaea by John Dykes. And that term Nicaea, you wonder, what does that have to do with? Well, back in 325 AD, the Council of Nicaea met to stand up for the truths about God and the Trinity, and they wrote the Nicene Creed. And of course, this hymn, Holy, 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 confesses that wonderful belief in the Trinity. So let's go back to my initial question. How? Do we approach a holy God? Well, the book of Isaiah chapter 6 answers that question. And I want to read a little of what this hymn is based on. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. These are angels. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices the doorpost and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. 
you'd become dead, you fall down before the amazing, mighty God. How do we approach such a mighty God who is full of power and presence? I want you to listen to Pastor Heber, verse 2 of Holy, Holy, Holy. Notice the angels that we just sang about falling down before God. Well, the same is true to approach the triune, that impossible nature, both three persons and one God. How do we approach him? The reading goes on in Isaiah to say, this is Isaiah speaking, Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. How do we approach as sinful people? Let's sing verse 3 together. Oh. You might be thinking, well, other people are sinful. Look at those people rioting. Look at those people who commit racism. Look at all of them and our horrible government and all the bickering and shouting and complaining and lying about one another. But what Isaiah is saying, look at yourself. Look at your own sin. None of us can approach God. All of us need to fall before him. That's what it means to approach God. We need a gracious God. As the reading goes on, it says, Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. We too need God to take away our sin, and he does so by Jesus Christ dying on the cross, forgiving you and me. It's much the same in the Lord's Supper. We take Jesus' body and blood, it touches our lips, it goes in our stomach. We are forgiven, the Bible says. Amazingly, ordinary objects forgiving us, or baptism, that water washing our sins away. That's how you approach God with receiving baptism, receiving words of forgiveness spoken in the scriptures by taking the body and blood of the Lord. But it doesn't stop there. Remember I said that Pastor Heber was hugely about bringing Jesus to others because don't keep it to yourself. This is true for you and for me and everybody else, those in India, those in South America, those in the United States. And so the angel and, and God speaks. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And he said, Here am I, send me. That's Isaiah and it should be us too. Here am I, send me, O Lord. And then a tough message Isaiah has to deliver. Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of the people calloused. Make their ears dull and eye, close their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their ears and hear with their ears. Understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. And that's the truth. 
People are going to reject this message, but that doesn't mean we don't get out what the Lord says. He wants every person to be saved, every last one of them. It's too bad people reject this because it's a free gift. Now, as you go, we're going to sing the last verse. I hope you sing with us, our family. We're not perfect singers, but God wants all of creation to join with the song. And that's the message that we're going to have in heaven. We're going to join together in perfect voices and all. Every person, every animal, even the stones are to cry out and celebrate the Trinity.